So I was feeling a little nostalgic recently, and I know that's kind of a default setting for me, but I was also a little sad. Uh, more so than with your usual nostalgia, because this hit of nostalgia came with a bitter realization. Uh, I have no plans to play competitive advance again, outside of maybe messing around at the ladder or something, once in a blue moon. But I realized that with the new Baton Pass rules, one of my favorite old advanced teams is no longer legal for use. So even if I wanted to use it just to mess around at the ladder, I couldn't. So I decided that this team of mine, which I loved, deserved a little bit of a retrospective to honor it and to be a little arrogant, I guess it's effect on the larger metagame, which I am proud of. And uh, so I have titled it The Assassination of Baton Pass by the Cowardly Advance Player Base, which is a more confrontational title than I would like, but I just love that movie and it's fitting-ish for what was done to my beloved team. Even though you could argue that the team's impact was a sign of Baton Pass being too much or whatever. But, uh, matter of fact, something I'm proud of uh, is that even when it was clear that Baton Pass in many forms still needed, uh, was still problematic, uh, a lot of the players fought to preserve uh, three BP users on the same team. Specifically because of this team with Zapdos, Celebi, and Vaporeon coming together to form a great offensive trio without being broken. Well, I guess some people thought it was broken, but I think they were in the minority, and I personally disagree strongly. Matter of fact, I think that their offensive potency uh, was one of the healthiest options for offense to contend with bulky teams in a metagame that already naturally skews towards defense being uh, the stronger natural pick. So I thought it brought a healthy ver uh, bit of variety and useful tools in order to, to break defense while still being good against offense, which is a really difficult balance to strike. So uh, the image will move for those who have their eyes on the screen. Don't worry, I just wanted to uh, present the team as it originally was and then uh, on the first row and then the other uh, Pokemon that eventually joined Jesse James's gang. So, yeah, uh, the I really liked the original idea of this team, uh, which was uh, as follows. Uh, it's If you look at the top six Pokemon in this box, then you will see that if you replace the Celebi with Snorlax, it's the old standard mixed offense. Now, I have ranted about how terrible mixed offense is and has been for a long time in advance. It used to be quite good with the old Phantomon slash Triangles teams, but... Its days are long, long behind it. It just gets murdered by everything. Doug Trio, uh, you know, a lot of defensive teams, yeah, you can maybe overwhelm it, but Doug just makes it too much. Uh, and Snorlax is also famously the worst Zapdos counter in the world. So, ugh, just horrible. So, uh, a big problem that these teams have is that the mixed attackers are often not strong enough, they're not bulky enough to withstand counterattacks, and they are not fast enough. So even if you break through the opponent's defenses, then their cleanup option like Starmie or Arrow is often going to finish you off. So, how do we fix this? And I guess this is where you get into the idea, is Baton Pass fundamentally unbalanced for this and that reason? I never thought this variant of the team was overpowered, but that's a whole different discussion. So the basic idea is to use Agility Passing Zapdos and Calm Mind Passing Celebi to bolster these mixed attackers against uh, the defensive teams that they otherwise struggle against. Now, Agility Zapdos is also a ferocious offensive threat in its own right and can take over games uh, Late, uh, late against offensive teams when they're weakened and everything's in Zapdos range and they're like, oh, well, I'll sacrifice and then revenge it with my arrow. Yeah, not anymore. 
So, or, you know, oh, it's at 20%, and it's in on my dug trail, but I just sack the dug, and then my star will finish it off. Yeah, no. Uh, and then when you hand that baton pass off to other uh, Pokemon, that's the biggest part, actually, because you notice how Celebi, Titar, and Metagross are all dug trio weak. And since the Swampert is offensive, then you also are more prone to Doug picking you off around half health. Now, I like pumping it with defense EVs, but uh, that's uh, getting into specifics territory. Whereas one of the reasons I love this team, and a lot of teams that I love in general, is that there's room for optimization, or not even optimization, but pr just preference tweaks. If you want a faster Swampert, you can go for a faster Swampert to outspeed Bold Suicune before it rests. Uh, I personally like the bulk on it to help handle things like Salamence and DD Tar and Arrow, uh, but you don't necessarily need those things because it's paired with Meta and uh, Salamence. So that's the basic idea uh, that. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, I tried to stumble over myself and say two things at once again. Uh, you. Because uh, the original draft had uh, HPI Zapdos, and then I switched to HP Grass. And then you can do all sorts of things. You don't even have to run a hidden power on it if you want. You can run a roar to stifle things like uh, special roar tar or roar spadev zapdos, things like that. You can run timid on it. I initially did because Moltres was irritating. Uh, you can run modest on it. I eventually did that because the power makes a huge difference when trying to blast through T tars and metagrosses and jirachis. Uh, sell it, but that's preference. I mean, the, mic the set on T tar was originally the mix set with uh, the UD Tar, most famously. Actually, no, I take that back. It's the other way around. It was originally Rock Slide, Focus Punch, Fire Blast, HP Grass with Lum. And then I switched it to the UD Tar, which is Brick Break, Fire Blast, Ice Beam, and HP Grass. Uh, so either is fine, up to preference. I mean, even the Meta, well, the Metagross, I like Psychic, HP Fire, Mash, Boom, but it's you know flexible and I mean even the Salamence set now, it's not just the Salamence set but the Salamence slot so if we look into the, at the team itself then I've left out a bunch of blank stuff like the EVs I mean these can be a million different things and I, I hate having one quote-unquote definitive version of a team it drives me crazy uh, I do have some stipulations though which we'll get into the details of soon and there are replays uh, showing this team in all its wonderful glory uh, so, we'll get to those, but first I want to explain the basic idea of how it came to be. So, yeah, Swampert, uh, Focus Punch. So yeah, Salamence uh, originally had Hydro Pump. It was all special Ments. And Hydro Pump Ments is a really cool set. I don't know that it was 100% the best choice here. Uh, and initially, I was just kind of experimenting with it. There are a couple of reasons. The reasons I think I wound up eventually switching to Brick Break, and the reason why I think that it's better is the idea of this team is to bolster mixed attackers through agility and call mind passes. And to be a mixed attacker, you got to hit on both sides of the spectrum, and you know that means Brick Break on uh, Ments for Blissey specifically. Uh, so. Uh, that wound up being the best choice, but uh, Hydro Mence does do some really cool things, which I'd like to highlight. Uh, I imagine that in today's advanced metagame, which from what I understand has Claydol in the top five or something insane, uh, then Hydro Mence is at the best it's ever been, but I've always loved it because going from Claydol being a pretty decent check to Claydol just getting destroyed is amazing. Uh, you do other cool things. You hit T-Tar uh, roughly as hard as Brick Break. That's not really the important part. The important part is that when you threaten T-Tar with Brick Break or EQ, then it can pivot into things like Gengar and Zapdos and Aerodactyl. Uh, Aerodactyl can pivot into Mix Mence a lot, actually. A lot of teams rely on it to do so. And obviously you prefer coming in on Fire Blast or HP Grass, but even if you have to eat a Dragon Claw once, then... That's, if that's what it takes. But with Hydro, then it just gets destroyed. But the main strength of Hydro Mence is you stare down T-Tar, and you use the move that hits T-Tar, but it also hits the switch in. Whereas with Brick Break, then it's like, well, okay, if I Brick Break and T-Tar switches out, then I give a free switch, or close to a free switch, to some dangerous Pokemon I don't want coming in. But if I Dragon Claw and the T-Tar stays in, then... That's not good. So with Hydro, you have your cake and eat it too. And trying to have your cake and eat it too 
uh, well, obviously you can go too far with it, but that's the goal of Pokemon in general. You could call it a, a middle ground, a, a catch-all option. Uh, but I eventually became addicted to that phrase because it perfectly summed up uh, a lot of players, I feel, have the mindset of I have to predict right and I have to guess right, where really being good at comp a lot of what being good at competitive Pokemon is isn't guessing what your opponent will do because that can go, no matter how good you are, that can go all sorts of wrong. So it's more about positioning yourself in ways to ideally it almost doesn't matter what your opponent does you're gonna do something effective anyway uh, easy example if you have a choice band Salamence and your opponent has uh, it's in against a Dug Trio and for some reason your opponent has five other Pokemon weak to flying okay I'm just making this up off the top of my head but let's say that's the case it doesn't matter you could tell your opponent I'm using HP flying here and it wouldn't matter because either Dug Trio stays in it and dies or an HP flying Pokemon weak, uh, uh, no, HP flying weak Pokemon switches in and dies. So that's the general idea. And with Hydro Pump Ments, that is illustrated because you either hit, smack the T-Tar that's staying in, or you smack the Gengar, Zapdos, or uh, Arrow. Ideally, Arrow, because that's a KO. That's trying to pivot in. Uh, and with the Gengar and Zapdos, it's really nice because Hydro Pump hits just as hard as Stab Dragon Claw. So it's the exact same damage. Uh, and it's just generally a good coverage move for pivoting in. Like, would you rather Swamper pivot into your Brick Break or your Hydro Pump? Hydro smacking it harder. So it's generally a cool move. Now on this team, Brick Break is better. Hydro Ments is more preferred for Pokemon that have other ways of pressuring Blissey hard. Whereas in this slot, then you need all the pressure you can get on Blissey. But I don't regret trying it out at first, and it bore some pretty awesome results. So, uh, you could also do Wish, I suppose, in this slot, if you wanted the team to have a little more longevity, because while the team is fast-paced, it also has a lot of good bulk and resistance between it. So it does enjoy, uh, it doesn't mind playing a longer-ish game. Uh, and matter of fact, it particularly excels at teams that try to, against teams that try to really slow the game down, uh, as we'll see in one of the replays, actually. So... Yeah, uh, Zapdos is just awesome. And you can mess with this so many ways. You can put Pattaya Berry on Zapdos and really go all in on passing and being fast-paced and stuff like that. But uh, the original Switch, well, when the team first came out, then... Well, I I'll get to that in a second. But obviously the more obvious... Obviously the more obvious options. Good lord. Uh, the more instantly obvious alternatives to Ments are stuff that's more traditionally gelling with a specially offensive setup. Uh, so, Dug Trio, because you have the two Baton Passers and Pokemon that like Blissey KO'd and you don't mind helping them out and uh, forcibly removing something like Celebi or Metagross, or Jirachi especially, because Jirachi is always annoying. And another option is Gengar, which possesses similar resistances to Salamence in fighting and ground, and also has a better speed, has, uh, and is a fierce offensive Pokemon, and adds a second explosion, uh, as well as a Pokemon that can lure in and mess with Blissey. Uh, obviously a fantastic Call Mind recipient with its special attacks. Its move pool can be anything. I mean, generally Will-O-Wisp explosion, special attacks. You could mess with it. You know, as much as you want, you know, throw in Taunt, Debond, whichever coverage moves you like, almost. It's hard to go wrong with Gengar. And I did really enjoy using variants with Doug and Gengar. Those were successful as well. But I loved the Mence version. But the version I loved even more was when I eventually replaced uh, Mence with Vaporeon, because this added a third passer. Uh, so the last move slot is left blank because Ice Beam is the default because I like the extra help against Salamence, and being able to smack Celebi is really nice as well. But you can also run Roar because you completely ruin Roar Suicune, which would otherwise uh, st uh, stifle you. And that's a pretty big one because if you do that then... But the thing is, the reason I always preferred Ice Beam is because a lot of Roar Suicune teams are so slow paced that you kind of bowl them over anyway. Calm Mind Celebi in particular is so it so excels you're calling my pass Celebi so excels at picking apart teams that try to slow the game down uh, to a ridiculous extent uh, and they just want to out passive you and Celebi really make sure you can't do that and that's why I really like this team's presence in the metagame 
because uh, I thought it was, you know, obviously it, it doesn't matter if Baton Pass does cool things if it also exists and does uncompetitive things, but it's a whole other discussion. Yeah, so I preferred Ice Beam. So Vaporeon does really cool stuff because obviously it uh, helps pass Substitute because uh, it has 101 HP sub. So talk about completely turning the tables on... Why is my music not playing? Play music. Uh, this is just my computer being slow. Ah, uh, there we go. Yep, yeah, uh, so... A Vaporeon is great because it passes 101 HP substitute, so turns the tables on Blissey. And in general, the answers to offensive Vaporeon are... Like, the Pokemon that take its hits, like Blissey and Milo, are completely taken advantage of by a sub-pass. Uh, especially... And sub-passing makes Calm Mind Cell be even more dangerous, and, you know, sub-passing to mix attackers makes them even more ferocious because they get in more hits without fearing a counter-attack. So... Because uh, a lot of the mixed attackers, uh, th this is why I love the synergy between the mixed attackers and the baton passers. Mixed attackers are generally not hard walled. They're played around with offense. So passing things like agility and call mind and sub make them better against offense. And now the few things that do uh, wall mixed attackers, then they get taken advantage of uh, by the call mind passing Celebi, which really exploits that kind of stuff. And what about Dugtrio always waiting in the wings to pick those things off? Well, that's where the agility pass from Zapdos comes in. Because it makes Celebi no longer trapped by Doug, Titar no longer trapped by Doug, Metagross no longer trapped by Doug. And the two, if you've ever seen an advanced game with a BP, Celebi, and Zapdos, they don't even pass anything half the time. Half the time they pass Intimidates from Salamence, if anything. But... Uh, what they do is they, they're just so good at forcing switches and using BP to scout the switch. So And just dry passing like that is fantastic. But you add boost into the mix and you can very realistically get an agility call mind pass thing going. And that just makes these Pokemon absolutely ridiculous. Uh, and to return to Vaporeon as the third passer who often gets in on the action, then... Uh, you, all, you also The reason why these Pokemon are so good and what I feel is a healthy form of Baton Pass is because... BP at its most negative turns Pokemon that are otherwise terrible into the standalone Pokemon that only exist to benefit their teammates. Where Zapdos and Celebi and Vaporeon even are all fantastic standalone Pokemon. I guess you could make the argument that this is what makes them too strong too, but I mean those were not the most oppressive forms of Baton Pass. Because the boosts they're passing are not so instantly dangerous and the chain is not so... Uh, unbreakable for decent teams so anyway I'm uh, getting a little off topic but uh, point B I, I'm gonna write down to make that tangent video because I keep forgetting until I make a video uh, I'll have to start with a basis for the tangent then I'll just go wild for however long until my voice gives out on me so yeah Vaporeon is also a ferocious offensive threat in its own right uh, because like I said, there are very few things that truly wall it, and the uh, other passers make it more difficult to play around with things like uh, opposing electrics. And those Pokemon that do truly wall it get taken advantage of by a sub-pass. So it's best of both worlds. It is really the Hannah Montana of this team. Uh, and I... Uh, fantastic, fantastic Pokemon. So, now we'll go over some uh, replays. So, the first game is the only one of the three that has me in it, and this was June 4th, 2018. So, putting aside for a second that it blows my mind, that was four years and two months ago. Four years, two months, and uh, over a week, my goodness. Then, uh, this was the first game in which I tried it out. This was a uh, team tournament, I think it was OUPL, so like a smaller team tournament, but still something that people enjoyed playing in, and, yeah, and uh, not to brag or anything, but our season was on the line when I played this, so whatever, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I just wanted to try it and see how it worked, so uh, we're not going to do a full-on breakdown, and uh, nor, nor I am not usually an HPI Zapdos kind of guy. And both the times that I, I have brought it to tournaments that I remember, I wound up have facing off against Mets and then not actually using it because I assumed the opponent would scout. Uh, I don't remember if that's what, what happens here. Oh, it does get scouted. Oh, and I go for it. Oh. Sorry, my old man memory is just all over the place. I was thinking of another game I had uh, in uh, 
where I, in fact, did have the faster HPI Zapdos against Mets, but I didn't use it. So, uh, that's okay. I know the old man rambling is part of the appeal of these videos. Kind of like if you watch an old, uh, like a B-movie, and not the B-movie for the young people out there obsessed with memes, but a B-movie, as in a lower quality movie. Uh, and the quality isn't so good because it was made for cheap and all that stuff. And you're like, why isn't the quality good? And then you realize, oh, that's part of the charm. So similarly, in this vein, I guess uh, I'm like a really artsy B-movie, which is awesome, by the way, uh, in which my all-over-the-place old man memory collapsing in on itself ramblings uh, are part of the appeal. Of course, there's more to it than just that. You're not just here to listen to uh, an old guy who's really 26, but in Pokemon years, I'm ancient. Uh, just lose his mind, because that's not all that happens here. After all, I'm not talking about Gen 5 OU, am I? <laughs> Sometimes I wish I edited in my videos so I could throw a laugh track in there, but that sounds like a pain. So anyway, uh, Zap in on Lax, and I don't BP because that would pass the minus one. So Metagross in on this. Uh, Metagross is also really cool to have on special offense teams because they so often struggle against um, uh, the Snorlax, obviously. And you can load up on all the special offense threats and all, but it, these situations early in the game um, where Snorlax or Blissey is bearing down on you, you don't want to just have the one Pokemon that can handle them, and that being like a Dugtrio or a T-Tar, because that can go very, very wrong. Oh, obviously, I almost forgot to mention, there are and were whatever variants of this team with Jirachi, uh, usually in the Metagross slot because of the typing, but that means, because Jirachi is going to be at the special attacker, uh, and Jirachi loves agility support. I mean, not getting outsped by Dugtrio is incredible, game-changing, but... That means in that last slot, I think when I used Jirachi over Metagross, then uh, Gengar was my preferred poke, simply because it switched in on Lax and threatened it with Will-O-Wisp. Uh, and so there were more tools for directly messing with Lax and Bliss, since Gengar directly contributes to that. Because like Dugtrio helps finish them off when Sand is in the picture, but early on you're leading with Zapdos, and you don't want to throw your T-Tar in there because it's going to get worn down, and then you're potentially going to get outlasted, and that is exactly what you don't want to happen. So, uh, yeah, Doug is going to... You gotta have something that can actually switch in and pressure it besides just T-Tar, because that's the easiest thing in the world to take advantage of. Anyway, Metagross coming in on Lax and Bliss is nice, but uh, then you have the problem, of course, where it just doesn't quite burst through the opposing team with the force you'd want it to, because as great as Special Gross is, sometimes you just need a little more from it. And that's where the Call Mind Pass comes in, because it's not going to be instant, and it's not going to suddenly break the game wide open, but it makes Metagross so much more threatening when its HP Fire is doing is 2 a KOing Skarmory, as opposed to struggling to 3 a KO, or where its Psychic is really plowing through Swampert, things like that. So... Uh, yes, so Metagross is in, we got a Mens Lax kind of thing here, and here's a- oh my- good job, Kev. So, awesome double switch between- from, uh, Metagross to Zapdos to come in on the- to take advantage of the, uh, physical wall that comes into Metagross, which Zapdos dominates. Oh, I really used to have it, didn't I? Sometimes, anyway. Other times, I did very foolish things. Anyway, there's T-Tar now, uh, because Zap Snorlax has been chipped by Zapdos' T-Bolt, as we see there. So now we want to keep uh, Snorlax's health as low as possible. From how little it takes from T-Bolt, then... Well, if it is offensive, because uh, this could be either a bulky team with Rest Lax and Suicune, or it could be a more offensive team. But it's very likely there's a mag. Uh, Oh, speaking of Mag, then that's another reason why I loved having Celebi on this team uh, over Snorlax, because Snorlax comes in on Zapdos and does so little in return. It's so easy to be stifled, whereas Calm Mind Passing Celebi generates offense for its teammates. So that's another big reason why I loved this team so much, and why I just love Celebi in that Snorlax slot. It's not a direct replacement, yeah, okay, it doesn't live pretty much any hit and then explode back, defensive security, whatever, but... Uh, the problem with these teams is not uh, 
defense as much as not being able to generate enough offense to overcome their lack of defense. Because an offensive team in advance is never going to be the most defensively sound thing in the world. What you do is not try to fix that but through defensive checks, because you're never going to do that, ever. What you need to do is have enough good offense. So this team tried to have uh, efficient offense. Uh, or sufficient offense to overcome it, and that came in the form of Celebi not only being better defensively, but being a juggernaut for its teammates' offensive capabilities. And Zapdos as well, because agility turns the whole thing on its head, where you think, oh, well, it's late game and everything's weakened, so I'm just going to clean up, and agility, and suddenly, yeah, gone over that. But I just wanted to stress it uh, on the subject of Snorlax and Celebi being better and all that stuff. So, yeah, uh, Snorlax... Chunk Z uh, yeah, Snorlax gets chunked a little, and we want to keep that low, so now we go to Zapdos, or er, uh, to Titar. Uh, and we know the Snorlax will not be using Focus Punch on that turn because of the wonders of Baton Pass. See, BP just awesome in general. So, speaking of Focus Punch, go for it here, assuming Lax does not want to stay in and risk heavy damage because he doesn't know what Titar said I am, but he just goes for an HP. I, th I think it's Bug. It could be Steel, but that was really niche at the best of times so i think bug is more likely for leech celebi because uh yeah i do like my leech celebi i did anyway so uh this is what yeah this was the initial mixed tar version which had rock slide and live another hit so go for it and snark's getting chunked so now it's in the danger with sand and around half health it's in the danger zone so the special attackers are looking really happy about that and we don't know if it's going to stay in or not. Either way... Oh, no, I switched to Metagross. Oh, that's a pretty nice move. Uh, yeah, preserving T-Tar's health if... Uh, oh, because it was an HP bug range, and... Yeah, no, that was a really good move by me. <laughs> I'm having trouble keeping up with myself. I suppose that's a good thing, <laughs> depending on how you look at it. But, yeah, Metagross in, and here comes Zapdos into Suicune, showing that it is a bulky one. And I don't know why I didn't go to Celebi there. Well, I guess I didn't want to reveal it yet. Uh, see, I'm uh, I'm a turn by turn guy. <laughs> well, at this point, I'm sure I had a. I, I like to think that I had more going on back then when this was played. So, Celebi comes in on Claydol, and I don't know why I don't BP there, or I just hard switch. Oh no, no, I think I wanted to uh, fake like I was uh, like I wasn't BP, because at this point it could just be a call mine three attack Celebi. Uh, so I wanted to gauge the switch, but I go to Zapdos and he just stays in and potentially gives me a free call mind, which I was not, I did not care for. Uh, did not think that was a good move, but hey, it worked, especially because it got the patented freeze. So, uh, yeah, I was not none too pleased about that. But at the same time, there's no rush to get Celebi in because there's a lot of opportunity for it since that Suicune is bulky. And if Claydol wants to stay in Ice Beam, then it'll Calm Mind all day. So EQ, uh, Suicune getting chipped. We're going to skip. Not be a little fat. Yeah, and there, here's the Calm Mind. So here comes Mence. We're going to see what set it is. Oh, no, I just BP into my own Mence. Okay. Well, my own Mence uh, is going to be... Well, with Sand, we see that my Mence is faster. And I assume it's a physical one at this point because this is looking like... Magdal, and uh, it's because you're not going to have Snorlax and Suicune and Claydol. And then I realized, oh, he might be using the team that Undisputed built to face me uh, a couple months before. Uh, so Claydol comes in, Dragon Claw, and yeah, mix mix uh, Salamence against this Snorlax, Suicune stuff, and Sand Fierce. And here's why I really love Hydro Pump. Because if Claydol stays in and gets destroyed, but he uh, thinks he's scaring me out with Ice Beam, but I just stay in. And maybe I could have read that. But actually, no, wait, no, no that, that makes no sense at all. Why would I? No, he would stay in with an Ice Beam, if anything. That would. I'm getting to the overthinking part. But yeah, now I Hydro, and he's pivoting around, thinking he's threatening me out, but now I'm just getting a lot more damage going. And uh, we actually see from how much that Hydro did, 28%, that that is a minus Spadef Mence. Uh, so it's mixed, even though it's on a team that looks like it would have a physical mens. So Dragon Claw and Snorlax is going to rest here, so in comes Swampert. And this is before Undisputed's uh, Hyper... Hyper Offense. Uh, Focus Punch Swampert became the standard, so I'm pretty sure I can get a big shot off here. Wow, the history. 
Yeah, he, he had debuted Focus Punch Swampert a few months prior, but it hadn't yet taken off as the automatic standard it then became. So, uh, Ice Beam to make sure Mix Mens doesn't come in for free. And now just EQing. And, other, oh yeah, this is a bold sweep, and this, my Swampert was really fast in that first draft, I guess, because I'm going first. EQ, force the rest, don't care if I take the plus one surf as much, because uh, it's mag, and then something I'm sure I knew at the time. <laughs> Metagross, yeah, Metagross, Metagross, obviously, uh, with the mag support and the type synergy and everything. So yeah, Celebi comes in on the rest, so that's ideal, uh, and it's as healthy as possible, which you really need. Celebi's health was really, really crucial for this team. Uh, and, oh, that was another thing I loved about this Celebi. M most of the time, when you run Call Mine past Celebi, then you needed to hit a certain speed. Uh, and with this team, you could be a lot more... I don't want to say lackadaisical, that's not the right word. Or lazy fair or anything like that. But you could really drop the speed low and just make sure it had as much bulk as possible and as much special attack as possible. Uh, because with Agility Zapdos covering you on the speed front, uh, then... You had a lot more leeway, and Calm Mind Celebi is a lot more threatening when it's modest and max special attack, so it's really stinging the Skarmory that, excuse me, it tries to phase it, and also has a, a huge chunks of HP and defense in case it gets caught off guard by Doug, or just HP in general for taking on Waters and Zapdos, so uh, Zapdos' agility really allowed for a lot of cool stuff in that regard. A similar idea on Titar and Metagross, actually, because those really like running a ton of speed, but when you're getting agility passes from Zapdos, you just have to make sure you outrun stuff at plus two, which is also going to get you, like, uh, you need a 187 speed to outrun Doug at plus two, if I'm remembering right, and 198 to outrun Arrow, which you, is fine. Uh, which you generally go for. <laughs> but sometimes if you're not feeling like the arrow thing, then you could make an argument for 187. But uh, generally 198. But that's And that's still going to get the jump on defensive Pokemon before, but that also lets you invest in both offenses. For example, uh, with T-Tar, then you really like actually having attack investment. So your Rock Slides and your Focus Punches, or your Brick Breaks if you're running U D-Tar, then that actually stings the Snorlax and Blissey that tries to stay in. Uh, similar deal for Metagross, except... You can also mix in some bulk, so you're taking opposing EQs better and such. So, yeah, Celebi's getting the Call Mind and hitting hard with Giga Drain, and yeah, Suicune rests off, but now Metagross comes in, and here comes the BP into Swampert. And now, here's one of my favorite turns in Pokemon history, where Swampert has plus one special attack and Torrent activated, so the correct move is to Hydro Pump, not EQ, because it's going to destroy, it's going to hit Metagross harder, and it KOs the Mets. <laughs> All right, let's see that again. I just love that turn. Just watching Hydro Pump KO 72 mens. Uh, wonderful. Yeah, so Suicune comes in, and that would have taken a chunk too, actually. Uh, but now Selby comes in and pressures, and this is what I mean. Like, as the kinds of... T in advance at this period of time, then there were a lot of teams that were trying to... Rather than... Uh, their method of adapting to Spike's teams was to risk worse matchups against offense... Uh, in favor of having these teams that just outpassed Spike's teams. And Celebi put the clamps down on those really hard. So, yeah, loved it. So, uh, BP to own Metagross, which is awesome, because now it has boosted HP Fire to weirdly hit Claydol decently hard <laughs> with unstab HP Fire. Uh, and still got bulk and speed and all that. So, and even this plus one Psychic smacks Suicune really hard, and it's faster because... I guess I had a lot of speed on that Metagross to outrun Suicune without a boost. Uh, but I think later I went to lower levels. But Oh yeah, I think I wanted to outspeed Offensive Swamper without a boost. Yeah, that was probably it. So you can do that, or you can go slower. It's This is, again, why I don't like the one definitive version, because there's so much room for optimiza customization, rather to say. Because uh, what's optimal is really up in the air, especially on a team with so much possibility like this which is one reason why I love it. So Celebi sets up again on Magneton because Celebi's amazing, and down it goes. And See, Celebi itself is a threat at this point, in addition to helping the team out. So here comes Swampert uh, to withstand Snorlax, and we're going to have a Swampert sweep, actually, as it douses Metagross. Yeah, so that's that, and that was... Uh, yeah, sometimes a team I make does not work out well at all, and other times it works out just as I had designed and hoped it to. Uh, sometimes even better. 
sometimes you get cool stuff like Swampert outgoing stuff in hilarious fashion. So after this uh, game on June 4th, then this team started getting spam everywhere. I only picked out this one replay from uh, World Cup, uh, Valentine versus Emdrag. I think Undisputed told Valentine to use this team. But uh, I remember thinking, oh, it's kind of cool that this... Because it was used and then it was instantly stolen, like, for everywhere. Because there were a bunch of advanced tournaments going on in, at the time, and I saw this team pop up in all of them. And I really was happy about that. And I kept using it myself and enjoying it very, very much. Uh, yeah. So, in this game, we're not going to go over it as... Because I can't give you that insider info, but... See, there's the Metagross back to Zapdos on the Skarmory. Get the offense going. And then he T-bolts instead of uh, BPing. I guess you could... On an offensive team like this, no good player like M-Dragon is going to risk the Zapdos. Because a modest Zapdos can kill Skarm. You know, you don't want to risk it. It's... Yeah, that'd be silly. Especially during the game. So I think that should have been a BP. You know, four years later, that should have been a BP. Uh, T-Tar should not have been the switch there. I Because it's 3 KO'd, and, but he's got the focus punch. But it also BP, so I don't agree with that focus at all. I think Rock Slide was much better there. Because even if Swamper comes in, then you go to Celebi or you threaten with HP Grass. Or, you know, or Zapdos if you don't want Skarmory coming in on either of those options. You have three good options if Perk comes in. But at least uh, he, you know, thinks... He gets a big rock slide on Gengar, so now it's in range for Zapdos T-Bolt, so that's nice. Uh, and unfortunately, he just lets the thing go to the second attack, and instead of pivoting to Metagross, as you know, it's there for, and just goes to it. So that was an, an unnecessary loss. And then he HP fires and crits the Skarm switch, so that was, yeah, that's Pokemon for you sometimes. Then he Psychics... And eats a big Hydro instead of going to Celebi. See, that's another thing. Uh, Celebi does not... Celebi switch, uh, switches into Waters a lot more comfortably. As opposed to the... And gets Offense going as opposed to the Zapdos and Snorlax Conundrum. So I, I just really love Celebi. Not just on this team, but on teams like this. So, what a poke. Can do everything. So, M-Drag tries to... He, see, M-Drag thought like a Skarm or a Snorlax kind of thing was coming in there, so he goes to Skarm, tries to get that spike, but it gets HP fired by Celebi. Let, let me go back just in case that was missed. So Hydro does a lot, because uh, it's minus Spideff Metagross, and a healthy chunk of a special attack investment on Swampert. And then he goes to Celebi, you know, turn late, but he gets the KO on the thing, so in comes T-Tar, uh, Focus Punch, and there's BP scouting it again. So here's Ments. And uh, if there was any doubt that it was the team, then there's the Hydro Mints. <laughs> but I think he changed the Mints to uh, Timid, I remember. Because I remember thinking that did... Well, the Jolteon could also have some bulk, I guess. But I remember thinking it did a surprisingly little. Because I think I had Modest uh, Mints. Because I just love plus special attack. And that's I loved being able to run plus special attacking natures on all those Pokemon. Because uh, I got to indulge because of Agility Pass Aptos. Beautiful. So, uh... Yeah, Jolteon BPs out of Selby switch in, brings T-Tar back in. There's another BP, in comes Pert, and eats an HP bug. So here comes Suicune, cool double water team from uh, M-Dragon. And there's Celebi again, eating a big Ice Beam, but uh, the Calm Mind there is fairly free, and now you get to... Uh, yeah, look at Celebi go. Even if it goes down, then it takes... Suicune down with it, and that's wonderful. Uh, so, I'm not paying attention to how optimal or whatever this is, but since uh, Jolteon is already chipped, uh, the Hydro Ments helped put uh, Jolteon in... Well, I mean, the, the Hydro versus Brick Break, the distinction wasn't really as big there, because I... Yeah, switched in against... Uh, what's it called? Yeah, from T-Tar, so... But, point being that... Uh, actually, no, I take it back. Hydro Mens was great here because it did exactly what I described it as earlier. I didn't even know. To, I've seen. I've, ever since I first saw this game four years ago, I just kind of skimmed through. But let's go back to it. So here we have an, an exact. Uh, oh, God, I clicked on something. Yeah, I just don't know what I'm doing with Firefox sometimes. Uh, yeah, so here we have the situation of uh, Mens coming in on T Tar. And uh, now we have the... Why is the music not playing? Good lord. Oh, well, not, I'm sure it doesn't really matter. 
because uh, I'm just so engaging, I'm sure. So, yeah, here we have the exact situation, which happens quite a bit. Mentz versus Titar. Now, uh, Gengar, you have that prediction war of, well, do I want to Dragon Claw the Gengar switch, or do I want to Brick Break the Titar? But here with Hydro Pump, you have no risk. You just Hydro the Titar and hit it as hard as you would with Brick Break, roughly. And for the purposes of this, it's effectively the same. It's a 2 a KO. Brick Break is not Okoing Titars in advance. Uh, so, you're 2 a KOing it either way, and you're smacking the Gengar if it switches in. So, perfect uh, example of the strengths of Hydro Mence. And the other game obviously had its uh, propensity for destroying Clade also. Yeah, Hydro Mence is awesome. So, here we have... Selby, we get back to all this, and Selby taking it out. So yeah, now we have Agility Zapdos threatening to clean up the game, because now it can't even be outsped by Gengar. I don't know if that was the best use of it, because Titar is still at full health and doesn't really care if Zapdos is faster or not. And then it gets an HP Ice or Grass crit, and now, yeah, another focus on the BP. And for some reason, Mence doesn't come in, and instead, Pert gets crit by Focus Punch and KO'd. So that was very strange, but Metagross comes in, mashes, uh, Mence pivots in on the Mence Metagross. I have a video called, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's about the amazing synergy of Salamence and Metagross. I just love everything about how the two of them interact for creative switches and whatnot. So, because you don't think, oh, Mence switches into Pert, even if it has HP Rest, but along with its type synergy with Metagross, then it's just beautiful. So... Uh, yeah, you can look that video up. It's a couple years old at this point. And it's only 10 minutes long, which is uncharacteristic for me. So yeah, uh, Mence pivots in, and it's hard to switch into it safely at this point, so it just HP grasses and down it goes. Uh, oh, and it's, yeah, it's timid and a slow Gengar, so it outspeeds and KOs it there. And there's the HP grass, which is safe, and Metagross to Zapdos finish off. So yeah, it, it's cool to see the team strength. So now, finally, what we're going to see is the Vaporeon version of the team. Uh, and this was the first tournament, big tournament uh, appearance of it, uh, with my buddy Eden's Embrace, or Sunny, piloting it in SPL against KG. And this, well, first of all, this uh, game shows the excellence this team had at punishing passive stuff, but also shows the ferocity of Vaporeon. So here we have Mens, Zapdos, Pivoting to Tar, great move on Sunny's end because Mence is going to go to a special wall to scout it, and then T Tar gets the sand going and threatens those special walls. So perfectly done by Sunny, uh, and he's going to go for a Focus Punch, and Blissey actually stays in and counters. Risky move because it gets rid of T Tar, but now he got a barrage of special attackers. So now uh, KG was originally thinking, oh well, I have Steelix, which is a great uh, Zapdos wall, which is true. So clearly we have this kind of like weird Wishments, Blissey, Steelix stuff, which has popped up in tournaments in the past, but uh, that kind of uber-passive team is exactly what gets exploited here. As great pivot by Sunny, not even going to uh, Celebi first, but now here comes Vaporeon and just Hydro pumping away, not even subbing. Uh, so Celebi coming in, this is not a hard Vaporeon wall. And he stuffs the Leech Seed with Celebi. So see, like this is exactly what I mean. This team is all about... Uh, hard walls, very passive, relying on you know indirect damage, and this team really excels with the natural cures and the passes uh, at shutting stuff down, shutting that stuff down. So here comes the call mind. Even if the Zapdos roars, then it can't do it forever. Uh, and if it doesn't, actually, it, it do, it's not even likely to because it, the team needs hazard control, and so there's going to be some spin or some I don't even know what, uh, or some spikes at least. But it's not going to be... If there's spikes, then it's weird to fit, so not that likely that the Zapdos has Roar. And even if it does, then it doesn't matter, because Celebi's going to stick around and get a gajillion opportunities off the Leech Celebi and the Steelix, and pass and weaken Zapdos until eventually it's forced to rest, and then you get the idea. So in comes a pass to Metagross right away, and it's just going to be ferocious because it's got a boosted Psychic and a boosted HP Fire for Steelix, and what's going to wall it? Uh, pivot to Mence, maybe? Oh, there's Star- yeah, there's the spin. There's Starmie. So KG expects a switch and goes for Psychic, does nothing, and Sunny just goes for Psychic of his own. Gets a drop, but the, the whole uh, idea is that even if he doesn't get that drop, then he just takes advantage of the Starmie with Celebi and passes again. So, uh, 
yeah, he just psychics and manages to brute force through the Starmie, but other Starmie was otherwise just going to be a uh, what do you mean? What am I saying? Set up fodder. Yeah, I've been uh, rambling for long enough. So Mens comes in. You don't even know what set it is, but it seems likely that's some wish stuff and flamethrower. So likely wish protect toxic flamethrower. Vaporeon takes advantage of that, and even with the burn, I mean, just pretend it used toxic or something. Uh, even with the burn, it's still threatening because it can sub pass even with the burn once, maybe twice, and it's still a fierce offensive threat at this point. Because with Blissey down, then you know what else is switching into it? No, three Pokemon sh you just slashed by Ice Beam. Uh, Steelix doesn't want to come in either, and Blissey's almost KO'd. Instead, uh, Sunny makes a great move and recognizes with Protect, it's another Pokemon that Selby takes advantage of, so he makes the win-win move of BPing. If Fence stays in and does whatever, who cares? Just free passes for Selby. Natural Cure, also really good here for bouncing off Toxics. So yeah, Mence is going to come in, what's it going to do? It's going to give Selby free Calm Minds, and that's exactly what Sunny goes for. Yeah, he has to hope he crits or, you know, Toxics the switch in correctly or something. Uh, BP goes to Zapdos, doesn't even matter if it gets to nice move by KG to Toxic there, but it doesn't even matter because Protect and Agility and yeah, you can see how this is, it's actually quite feasible to do this even against more aggressive teams, but now BP and now we've got a plus 3 special attack, plus 2 speed Metagross, and that is going to sweep, <laughs> cleanly KOing Ments with Psychic, let's see that again, it's the ESPN highlight reel. And, oh, I forgot how long it took sometimes. Mm. Thing of beauty. Yeah, Zapdos isn't good. Oh, yeah, Zapdos isn't good. I think Zapdos gets crit, but even then, it, it needed to crit back to stop anything. Uh, even a T-Bolt pair wouldn't work because of the Lum. So, with the Lum on, uh, yeah, that's the game. So, yeah, it, with the Lum on Meta and T-Tar, then they become even more difficult to deal with with status. But you could also hinge on Celebi status absorption abilities and run lefties on them, or a boosting item uh, of some sort. I don't know, lots of possibilities. So, uh, I, with that, I will say goodbye to this beloved team of mine. Jesse James assassinated by Robert Ford. <sighs> Brad Pitt's finest moment. Yeah, uh... So, goodbye, team. And th thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And, yeah, uh, maybe I'll dig up some more replays of this team and put them in the comments or something. But, uh, or, you know, maybe I'll find them on the, uh, share them on the Discord server, more likely. So, join the Discord server because it's awesome and fun. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you next time.